Yo, 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 it's the Black King, and welcome back, welcome back to the Black King Plays, Command and Conquer, Red Alert of Retaliation. Um, another skirmish mode, but, uh, yeah, I'm actually on the Allied side. I don't have it up or anything. Um, I don't have it up or anything, but I do have some, quite a few differences, though. It might, it might look a lot of the same, but the difference is, is that I'm actually playing on the Allied side. Otherwise, I would have already had a sub pin there. And what you're doing is you're catching me somewhat in the early stages. And this is a very rare notice. Um, so these guys started out really weird. I mean, all there's like three of us that are allied, um, and one of us is Russia. What you don't want is to get all of you being the same one, because then it's just a total nightmare of trying to figure out if you should take over or not. And the truth of the matter is, you could, but you know, it's just easier just to wipe them all out once you've regained your forces and everything that you need, what you need to do anyway. Anyway, they had their command center going all the way over here, and so I was like trying to figure out what was going on, why they were, why they weren't set up, <laughs> and they were just because what had happened was. All their troops were, like, in the way, and they didn't even bother to move them or nothing, so they just kind of kept moving around until I came in there and did something, and, well, basically, I took out a few of them, and then the other guys started attacking, and it was crazy, so, and, so you know, who's Russia is these guys right here. Another key factor you don't want to do is be the first one to put up a helicopter. You can do that if you want to. Um, no matter what side you're on, or, well, I, I don't know why I say it like that, but it, actually I should say you're playing on it or as, because, uh, you know, that's why you play the game. It's too bad you couldn't do them without that, but anyway. I mean, it would be nice if I could just, like, take a base and kind of center it down here or something where it's out of the way so that... They do the attack. I don't have to worry about it. And, um... Because there is plenty of space over here. But there's not enough space over here to put a bunch of power events, power plants, these, and stuff like that. So, it's, it's a tiny island, but it helps you regain your, your, your footing, or your foothold in this world. Um... So, yeah, and I I did uh, restart the session over. I didn't even bother finishing. I just kind of restarted it over. I was thinking about it anyway. Then I finally did it, and, well, that's the way it goes. I'm just in the middle midst of still getting ready to go. I'm not really going to go anywhere at this moment, but I'm getting prepared, as you might say. Okay. Oh, dear Lord. Anyway, see, since I'm allied, I get these kind of barracks. That, actually, the war factories just about look the same. The barracks look differently. Uh, and if you can't tell, the war factories and stuff like that look all the same. But there is a difference. You can still make these. But there are different buildings and different kind of tanks. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wish I could make it so that I could just, like, do it out of at least one building. Instead of having to make it two. And the bad thing about the AI as well is, like, they make they seem to want to make two barracks and two war factories. Good strategy. But the, but the bad thing is, when you do that, you only have one factory you're coming out to. You have to constantly select it. I mean, I don't know about the AI because I have no control of it. I don't. I don't know what goes on with the AI. I just know that for a factor, when you're doing it, no matter what side you're playing on, even in the barracks, you all you get. Ah, uh, see, these guys have been wounded pretty badly, and these are the blues. They got like one more, so they're okay. At least for a little while, anyway. And another thing I don't like about them 
It doesn't matter how many you put on there. You can only have up to three AIs, which is crazy. But anyway. They seem to want to attack each other, including you. Instead of waiting until your, your uh, sources are prepared, they don't want to constantly bombard each other instead of just like, you know, backing off or whatever. So, it's kind of a little bit of a new way. See, I didn't take over at base. I am playing as the Allied. And not because I'm only on disc one. I have disc two, I think, anyway. I'm not sure. I'm talking about the emulator. I'm not talking about the actual CD itself. I own both, but that's not the point. Um... So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a very good idea to, to just, like, not go ahead and do the helicopter right now. I don't think I can even build the helicopter right now. Now, with the Allied side, which I've never seen in the campaign mode, where you can actually build a building like that. I've only seen like that. And there are missing, well, I mean, there are stuff that I'm missing. Yeah, there's actually a Chico for fast build, but it's not, it doesn't really affect the game or anything. It doesn't really make them fast build. They are already on fast build. So basically, if you're thinking, oh, it's so wrong and you shouldn't do that and it cheats the game, well, think about it this way. The AI is cheating, so, you know. But it's basically programmed in their code in any fast build anyway. Anyhow, there are tanks that we're missing. I don't even know what they are, but they can be unlocked, I guess. I don't know. I've never actually beaten the entire campaign mode. And there are troops that we're missing. You know, I have no idea what they are. And then there's, like, sea vessels. I have no idea. You know, we're missing, and we're missing a bunch of stuff in there, too. But I'm not going to follow a build until later, because you've already seen that. But hopefully they'll build a helicopter before I do. So that I can go take over that. And by they, I mean... So I can get to them quick enough. Might want be wondering why we're slowing and lagging. Well, it's because it's normally slow this way anyway. But, oh, that's not good. I protect the ore trucks because I don't believe in taking out their ore trucks because it, I need them to survive. Anyway, I'm hoping they'll go ahead and build a helicopter pad so I can take over. See, I already... When it comes to this, you can't take over this. You can actually build it once you take over this. It's just a few similarities... Like, in order for me to get their tanks, I have to take over at least one of their war factories. And, same thing goes for, like, if I want to get their their troops, I, want to, I have to go take over their barracks. However, as far as dogs go, well, I gotta build the kennel. It's just fine. That just makes it that much easier to, to take over here and build it. But the problem with that as well is that... Like I said, I wish I could take an, at least a mobile construction vehicle. Which, if you can't tell, that's what they um, they are. Before they land. They're called mobile construction vehicle. And when they land... And they, they You know, you, gotta, you have to be obviously in a good enough space for them to... Big enough... To make this. See if I go over there. It'll just say enemy structure. But you won't be able to. Because you won't be able to tell. This is about the same thing. Except. Again like except for. The minor differences of what you can build. In this game. I 
I think they're called construction yards, but anyway. What they basically allow you to do is build up buildings like these and and uh, stuff like that. Once that gets taken out, that's it. I mean, you know. You don't have to worry about it if you've already landed and put one down. It's uh, and it makes it even slower progress when they when everything gets wiped out. I've had that happen on this map. See, I had a mobile base up here, but it, just because that's how you have to start out anyway before you can move on. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been able to have a construction yard or a uh, excuse me, one of these little things. Which, if you can't tell, we don't get submarines. And the icon doesn't show that, no matter what side you're on, for uh, the uh, kind of pin you're in. Doesn't even say, uh, yeah, it doesn't even say the building or anything that you're in, but it's fine, because you should know. It's not, hopefully, your game's working enough to where it'll let you know what the name of the building is, and that's where it's coming out of. Like, say you want a tank to come out, well, you're going to want to know it's right here. Same thing goes for troops, comes out of there. Again, it depends on what you got. I mean, it's good to have two if you have two, if you, you know, the game, but it doesn't work that way. I mean, so I could go ahead and bring down here another war factory, as they're called. I think they're, they're called, I don't know. Anyway, waiting on that to build. But anyway, if you have to. Actually, it does work that way. Sorry, I mean, my bad. Anyway. If you have to do... Uh, yeah, what this does is... It, uh, it evaporates all the fog around here. And it also unlocks things, so... So yeah, and then you got, um, so we got missile silo, which means we can actually do an A-bomb a a -bomb launch, which is atomic bomb. And what that does is, you know, it, uh, you know, the only difference is as well is that we don't have an airfield that looks exactly like this. They'll be highlighted once I build something like this uh, anywhere in that range. Which means I can go into there. See, right now I have access to the AA gun. And unfortunately, though, the AA gun is the only thing in this entire doggone side that you have to have power to. Nothing else just requires power, which is crazy. So it might save you in the long run, but I would say more to definitely both sides are good. You know, at least for the defenses. Now, I usually like to evacuate everybody I can up the island, but that depends on how heavily. I'm being attacked. You just gotta risk the odds. I'm actually make sure you got it. the main important thing though is that you want to make sure that if nothing else, at least one of those trucks you got and a mobile construction vehicle goes into one of these comes down here, you know, somewhere where they can safely land. So you can make better resources and regain what you can to rebuild up your, you know, your your stuff, your, your, your forces. That way you get a little bit more time. Because it'll be obviously a long, long time before anybody builds a helicopter. I mean, I could go ahead and get up mine. Sometimes 
after I build up mine, they do it too. That can happen. Or, like, you know, if you wait long enough, they'll build up one. It takes a while for this to load because uh, it's like it's building it to launch it or whatever. And it's called a GPS satellite. What that does is, like I said, it, it um, the whole entire screen would normally be completely in fog right now. You might see colors, but there's, they're more prominent when they have... A radar dome. I couldn't think of the name. But anyway, yeah. So. And I'm still somewhat visible to them, but I'm even more, way more a prominent threat when I have the radar dome. See, they can't get to me unless they're on a boat or they drop troops down. And in this game, they don't drop tanks. You can drop them on certain types of helicopters. And I'm guessing that's in this game. I have no idea. And don't quote me on that because... You know. But I know that there are actual aircraft carriers that are, you know, in the air. That drop the tanks. You know. I don't know what war we would have used them in. But I know for a fact that we carry those. But in this game, so far, they don't have that. It's not a prominent thing to worry about. So, which means the only thing we have to worry about, since I'm the first one. Always, more often than not, you're always the first one anyway. You know, to build a sub pin or... I forget what they call that. Um, depending on what side you're on. If it's a sub pin, obviously, you're on Russia. Yeah, a naval yard, which means I can build these types of ships. You know, like that. That's the only ones. This, however, comes standard with any one of them, whether it's a sub pin or not. But being as that I'm the first one, they won't build it. I've yet to actually come across a game playthrough where they actually, where anybody, even on the Russian side, well, actually, they can't do anything unless they build up their troops, or excuse me, rather not troops, but their buildings, because that's how it works. You can't, like, this is not like in, uh, I can't remember the name of the game right now, but it's not um, the point here. But anyway, if you have buildings near where you need to build, they can't do, you know, you can be able to do that. Otherwise, see, right now, they're at a stuck point that they cannot do anything water-wise anyway. Not that they would. So I'm not really worried about that right now. And to be honestly fair, as much as time as I get to even build or rebuild my forces, I wouldn't be worried anyway, even if they decided to do it an attack, which... Would take bloody forever, which I don't have that kind of time. I mean, it'd probably take years and years and years before they finally say, okay, got enough buildings out here after we wiped out whatever, because that's what they want to do, obviously. And then all of a sudden they build a sub pin and come after me or something with troops. Otherwise, it doesn't, it, it might take a long time for them to build a helicopter pad, but not as long as it would get a, you know, Thing the only time I've actually seen the enemy actually put one up there was to the campaign mode because it's to the star line, and that's it. Otherwise, there's nothing else here. Anyway, I'll see y'all later. Thank you all for watching. This has been the Black King plays uh, this, and uh, you know, I am. Uh, I thought I'd go ahead and get something out there, but I'm also, oh, I wanted to tell you that, uh, I'm holding off on Sakodan at the moment. I'll do some more tomorrow, but I just want to tell you, all I mean, I'm going to go ahead and work on it and get the bonus 
done. I just, I've been putting off because I've been really, really busy. I know it's, not, it's an excuse, but it's called the truth. You know, also I want to catch up on Bleach, but, you know. If you're not familiar with that, it's just an animated show that I don't recommend unless you're, unless you like anime. And in case you want to know what these are. And the water are a little bit different, but all the same. They, I think they randomly have a chance to give you troops. Actually, I know for a fact that they do. But, they also can give you money. Just like when you see them on the ground. You know. I don't know what the higher rate is, but I know that for a fact that a lot more often than not, you will get money... But I wouldn't always recommend it because also they can explode your troops or your surrounding area. Not a good idea. You can take the risk sometimes. But I would recommend that if you're going to do that, put like a tank or a a uh, you know a ship to go up against it and put it hit with uh, invincibility. I was trying to think of it, but yeah, because it, there is a thing in here. It's not a cheat, but there is a cheat where it can be always on, which is, comes in handy. Now, it does not come in handy, however, in campaign mode, which sucks. Because, let me tell you how good that would come in handy. Only one mission would it ever be useful for. And that would be the one so far that I've noticed is with... Uh, I forget what's his name, but otherwise, I mean, I can't make him invincible, but I can make the tanks invincible, and that would be good because that would help out the mission a lot better. Either way, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to see you all later. Bye-bye.